Hi, I'm Tom, and I've always had a passion for cheap, fast sailing boats and making them better. This is my 2007 foiling moth that I recently purchased off Facebook Marketplace for just 100 bucks. In this series, we're going to finish off the boat, get it out on the water, and then find out how fast you can go, how much fun you can have, and if you're even competitive on a boat that costs just 100 bucks. So the first job this week that sounded pretty easy was just uh, drilling some holes for the main sheet bridle. So it's a four to one main sheet, so it needs two blocks down the bottom, and obviously these need somewhere to tie off to. Basically, I just wanted to drill some oversized holes, fill them full of thickened epoxy, and then glue in some stainless line fair leads on the top, and uh, I thought that'd be that. Unfortunately, it was really hard to uh, get anything to stick in that void so that I could get the epoxy to stop running through the hole. So I ended up putting this job on the back burner and procrastinating about it for about a week. In the meantime, I went to Kmart and bought the cheapest chopping board they had. And then I went to Bunnings and bought the cheapest uh, hole saw set that they had. And I used the hole saw to uh, yeah, cut out some sort of discs that I was going to be able to uh, tie Dyneema to uh, as like giant washers so that there was something to pull up against the back of those holes for the main sheet bridle. But yeah, once I'd cut out these little discs and then uh, used an oversized drill bit to make sure there was no sharp edges, I still hadn't quite figured out the rest of it, so I uh, yeah, put that on the back burner and got on to the next step. So as you can see there, my foil uses um, basically a bell crank, which is that little metal plate sticking out from the top of the foil, uh, from the bugs cam system that was in my old boat. I needed to convert this over to have a piece of rod coming out of it, as you can see, um, which is a bit longer, that suits the flight control system that's installed in this boat. And then it was time to do something I probably should have done ages ago, and check if the foil actually fits. I really hope this fits, because if it doesn't, I'm pretty stuffed. Uh, so yeah, this is the Mach 2 foil out of my old boat. Should work. This boat was designed for fatter Mach 2 foils, and this one's but had a packet attached to it. So yeah, let's see if this works. Uh, otherwise, who knows what we're in for. Unfortunately, the foil didn't fit. I'm just going to check the rudder fits, because uh, if that didn't fit, who knows what could happen up here. And uh, yeah, then I'll go watch the America's Cup while I uh, yeah, wait to hear back from the old owner, just to see what his thoughts are before I start cutting into the hull. So uh, yeah, let's see if this rudder works. On the bright side, with a bit of encouragement, uh, to get my mangled rudder pin through the gantry. Uh, the rudder did fit. I was a little bit sus on the angle of attack. As you can see, it looked like it was raked quite a long way forward, but uh, yeah, we'll fix that in future episodes. All right, so I've got to get this center board to fit. Um, I contacted the guy that I bought it off uh, last night and he came back to me and said, yeah, the bottom of that center board case where it's jamming is just timber. So I've gone to Bunnings and bought the uh, yeah cheapest wood rasp set I could get. So I got three for nine bucks. So now I'm just going to keep uh, hacking bits of boat out of the bottom until it's uh, yeah, finished and uh, actually fits, then we can test the control system. So while I was ensuring that I had a precision fit around my centre board with no slop, I managed to uh, somehow knock a piece of hull out from behind the centre board case. Uh, it sort of looked like it was a bit of uh, timber or something that kind of exploded outwards while I was uh, yeah, fitting the centre board in when it was a little bit too tight. Uh, this boat's obviously had a lot of incarnation since it was launched in 2007 and I'm not sure if this part was kind of where the centerboard's been moved from in the past or whether I just hit it a bit hard, but we'll fix that later. I got it! Finally! Oh, that was a massive effort. So next I needed a way to pull the uh, bell crank out of the top of the foil forward in the boat so that the wand always springs forward. I thought about this for ages and I thought I'd invented the coolest thing ever. It was like a nut with an eye on top of it. So I sort of invented it and I'm like, this is so cool. And then, uh, yeah, I realized I'd invented the eye nut, which has uh, been around for quite a while. It was then suggested by my friends that I should just get a swage eye and uh, get it drilled out. And uh, that's what I did. So yeah, swage eye straight on top of the rod, super neat. That can just live in the boat. Foil comes in, bang, that goes on top. Shot cords connected to that. And uh, that does the job. Yeah, almost 11 o'clock. Really good progress tonight. Um, I've sort of come across a few more jobs to do. Um, I think the angle of attack is going to be too high because uh, this board seems to have a bit more rake on it in this boat than it did in the last boat. Another thing I want to try and do is get the gearing uh, sort of fitted without fitting another control system into the boat because, um, yeah, it's already pretty busy in there. And the guy I bought the boat off, he doesn't, didn't think he changed it much anyway. So what I want to try and do... Um, I'm going to test my drilling skills tomorrow night. But um, I want to try and put another one of these 
uh, pins like that, I want to put one here. I might have to just shorten this a little bit, but yeah, it'll work. I just have to learn how to drill a hole on the side of a piece of tube. So I think I'll be able to file it down, make it flat enough to uh, get started, and then just work my way up through various drill bit sizes until I get to three mil, and then this will fit straight through. That'll hold my gearing down this side. My uh, little swage eye thing that goes on top will have the shot cord connected to it up here. I'll just have to dock that about there to allow for the size of the eye, so it'll still fit under the deck fairing. And uh, yeah, this can just live on a little retainer rope um, in the cockpit there, and I just get there and just go bang. That's all sorted, simple, can't come uncleated. Um, yeah, that seems like the go. So yeah, got a few important things done tonight. Didn't look like much, but um, yeah, slowly ticking the jobs off the list. Okay, so Friday night now. Hoping to really knock this uh, over on the weekend, or at least get most of the way there. So tonight I'm just gonna try and finish off this foil system and check my angle of attack. Um, I have had a bit of a talk to all my friends today to figure out what the best plan of attack is for this uh, push rod to hold the gearing uh, all the way on or basically keep the right height um, as far down the push rod as you can which uh, sort of sets how sensitive the boat is to the waves um, so it's kind of like if you have a lot of gearing on it'll be really bouncy but if you have no gearing on it'll be kind of floaty and wishy-washy and uh, easy to crash so I want to make it so it's hard to crash so I was a bit worried about drilling out a hole to suit one of those um, pins like this because I think they're like two and a half mil thick and uh, that means I need a three mil hole in my corner inch rod, which is possible, but uh, for someone like me in a backyard setting, I was sort of pushing it. So um, yeah, I managed to get a tiny little stainless R clip and that's 1.36 mil. Uh, so that's way better. And then I'm still a bit nervous about this because it's uh, yeah, a bit sketchy, but I'm well, not sketchy, just yeah, don't know how it's gonna go. And then I had to get the uh, second cheapest center punch from Bunnings. So uh, that's two mil, so that should be okay. Uh, I'll need to punch it accurately. Um, I've got a file so I can yeah, file a flat on, then punch it. And then I invested $6 in the best drill bit I could get for once. Uh, Cause it's yeah, one and a half mil designed for stainless steel. And then I even got um, cutting oil just to give myself the best possible chance. So I'm gonna try and support the foil uh, somehow and then put it in my vise and uh, whack some cutting oil on it once I've done those other things, and uh, see how we go. Hello, you don't even know my name, but I am happy you came by. No lessons learned, of course you're gonna leave us soon as you came across. So I've always been a bit daunted by uh, cutting and drilling stuff, because it just never goes well, uh, or it's always tricky. Turned out I just needed cutting oil, which I didn't know was really uh, that critical, but uh, it's like trying to do carbon fiber without epoxy like it's just the biggest game changer uh everyone's got to get it it also smells like the smell of australian manufacturing so when you walk into like a factory and there's always that distinctive smell it turned out it's that stuff so thanks to my cutting oil i was able to get my hole for my little r clip in there and then i promptly dropped it on the ground in the gravel eventually i found it again and i was able to uh splice a little dyneema strop onto it straight away and then I soaked the splice in super glue so that it's uh, actually holding the pin to the Dyneema. And then uh, that went straight in the boat. So yeah, now that's all captive because uh, if I ever lost that, I'd be pretty stuck. So I was really happy with how that worked out. As you can see, I've got to give the uh, ride height thing just a slight push towards the deck and then the R-clip fits in, which means it's being held at uh, the position of maximum gearing and uh, I haven't complicated the boat with any additional systems. Then I was just able to tie some shot cord on down near the mast base and then, uh, yeah, that part was all done. Ok 
Okay, so now the control system's working. I've got to uh, check the angle of attack, so what angle the foil's on all the time. With this foil, you want it to be at kind of, I think it's like one and a half degrees all the time. Um, I do need to pack out the case just a little bit at the bottom, just with tape or something later. But um, yeah, so to do this, I just put my 3D printed template I made um, <coughs> from the Mac 2 file on the foil, and then I get my little angle meter and uh, zero it on the hull right here. And then I just butt it up against here and we see what it says. It's definitely too much. Okay, so it's Saturday morning. We'll try and uh, finish off this foil angle of attack uh, situation. And uh, then we can, yeah, flip this up and, uh, yeah, keep doing the deck. So I found an old clam cleat uh, backing card, which is like a thicker plastic. So I'm hoping uh, that might be a bit less, like, compressible. So I'll just put a few layers of that in because I'm trying to get from 7 degrees to 2. So it's going to take a bit. Um, obviously, I don't want to chock it out too far that I don't get, uh, yeah, enough engagement from the socket, which has been pointed out to me. So... Yeah, I don't want to weaken the joint by putting too many shims in, but I also need the angle to be right or I won't be able to sail. So, yeah, we'll chuck this in and uh, see what happens. So that's uh, four clam cleat backing cards I've got in there and one run stand one. So, let's see what uh, difference that makes. Not bad, 3.4. So just doing some maths. So I was at, you could say like, it's basically seven and a half degrees. That got me to 3.4. So then that's 4.1 degrees. So you, and I added four clam cleat backing cards. So you could say that I need to add, what? One more would get me to 2.4. So I reckon one more clam cleat backing card and one more run stand backing card and I'll be there. Okay, so I've added the uh, one more clam cleat backing card and one more run stand one. Now we're at about 2.8. So I think I'll put one more clam cleat one in and I reckon that'll get me sort of into the mid one, one and a half sort of range, which is where I want to be. So yeah, we'll do that. So that's 0.3 positive. Oh. 1.48, 1.91, 1.64, 1 1.8. Yes, did it, that's perfect. While I had the boat upside down, I took the opportunity to just whack some uh, thickened epoxy in that hole I'd created a bit earlier on with my precision fitment technique. So uh, yeah, that wasn't too hard, but um, yeah, just another little job to do. So I still don't have a way to make the wand longer. So at the moment there's a the rope system I've installed in the back in the boat. Uh, but that's, uh, yeah, all that's doing is pulling it uh, up. So if I want to lower the boat and uh, make the um, wand more responsive, I pull the rope in the boat. But when I uncleat the rope, nothing's going to happen at the moment. So what I want to do um, is pretty much what I think this is designed for is, uh, yeah, try and set up a shock cord system that pulls this little tab uh, down here down but it's a little bit tricky because um yeah I'm not sure if I've got enough space like there's a little model yacht block here but you can't fit shock cord through it so what I'm going to need to do is probably make like a yeah Dyneema little strop that goes from here to here and then uh, yeah have shock cord somewhere else that uh, yeah does the work so yeah I'll have a fiddle with it and see what I can come up with. So this was another job I didn't see coming. Uh, unfortunately the trolley axle that came with the boat 
didn't fit the trolley wheels that I had off the trimaran or my old moth or something. So I had to 3D print my own uh, wheel bushes to adapt the axle to suit the wheels. Um, I thought I did a pretty good job at this and that the arrow dart would hold them in. And then uh, I just thought cable tires will stop the wheels sliding around. Unfortunately, I have since been proven wrong about all of those things and the bushes have fallen out and the wheels are sliding up and down the axle. So that needs a bit of a rethink. But at this point, I was pretty happy that I could wheel the boat around and uh, yeah, it was all pretty easy. So what did I end up doing with those bridle holes from the start of the video? I thought instead of trying to fill it with uh, thickened epoxy, why don't I just sleeve it with whatever I can find that's kicking around. So I still had that bit of carbon tube from the spreader extensions. I mixed up some 5 minute araldite, cut the tube to length and I uh, just jammed it in the hole uh, so that I ended up with sort of a similar effect with a lot less effort. Okay, so Sunday afternoon. Um, gonna just trim back those uh, carbon tubes I glued in last night. Then uh, make up some little strops that'll uh, pull up against those bits of Kmart chopping board I made last week. And then uh, get those low friction rings in for the bridle. Once that's done, that's kind of everything done inside these uh, gaps. So unfortunately everything you're seeing me do here is uh, actually a waste of time because uh, installing the strops I'm about to splice up was actually completely impossible. But anyway, uh, we'll tackle that in the next episode. Thanks to everyone that uh, left a comment recently and uh, sent me a message on Instagram at uh, Tom Stutchbury Sailing. It means the world to know that people enjoy these videos uh, after all this time out in the rain and so on. So yeah, remember to like and subscribe and uh, yeah, I'll see you next time.